Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris, this is Taylor Welding, and today we're gonna to talk about how I got set up and how I think everybody should get set up when they're taking a plate test. I had to go take one. It was the first one I've done in over 20 years. Maybe not 20 years, but this particular backing plate, uh, D14.1, all it is, is a vertical up on one inch plate and an overhead on one inch plate. And I took it with their machine and a lot of people are asking me, how many amps, how many amps? Their machine didn't have an amp readout. One of my machines that I weld with most doesn't have an amp readout. Try to get away from that. Just dial it in. It's too hot, it's too, you need to know. I got a few questions I wanna answer and uh, some comments I wanna get into. Uh, I actually printed out the test results. We can go over that if you'd like to. Uh, somebody in the comments said, uh, Asan, he said, I passed my D1.1 3G stick first try with a 332. He said, my bead looked rough and my filler looked bad and I would never weave and I'm 90% sure that your root had slag inclusions. <laughs> okay, Mr. Asan. Thank you for the comment. I like it. I wish I had the skills you had, and I'm not talking about the welding skills. I'm talking about those Eagle X-ray eyes, okay? That is very impressive. It may have, it may not. The test I took didn't. Um, and to be honest with you, man, people don't really understand. When we go to work, we weld all day, every day on location, and every weld is x-rayed either B31-3 Severe or 1104. It's, you know, if I was to have slag inclusions on a plate test, that would be a pretty bad letdown, but it can happen. Pride comes before a fall. So <clears throat> I always try to do what I know works and err on the side of caution. Try to be cautious, but while saying that, somebody in the comments asked about, it was Beef Man. He said uh, he made it to the end, thank you. This is about the last uh, long 54 minute plate test I did video, simulation I did right here at this anvil to try to show people what I was gonna do on the test. I'll get to the setup in just a second because you're really gonna like it. He said, let's talk slag. I noticed that you typically didn't clean the slag off where you left off. He said, at the end of the rod. So where you leave off with a 7018 vertical going up, slags, all that slags trying to come down. Keep that in mind. Just started a new rod ahead. So I'd leave all that slag and I'd start a new rod, come down, make a little, and then go and then just welded it out, cleaned it up at the end. Does that approach cause slag inclusion on the restart? I've never been called, I, maybe, maybe I have, would more likely get porosity. Now they might call it slag because they don't know what it is on x-ray. They, they just know something's in there. Porosity, a lot of things, I, I talk about it a lot, with the 7018, wind, uh, contamination, uh, grease, oh man, concrete, man, concrete will mess you up big time. Uh, it'll cause porosity. <clears throat> Slag inclusions. If you're not burning hot enough, maybe. Um, but when you leave off, when you're coming up, and you, when you pull the rod away from the plate, it and it spreads all that out. And there's a big flat spot where you left off. And there'll be a little bit of slag around, say the flat spots right here and the beads right here. There'll be a little slag on the corners. If you're worried about it, you can just touch it with the file and knock the little, you know, I 95% of the time on my test, when I was actually taking the test, I don't think I ever touched a restart just because there's, you're coming down to where you left off, 
and then you're starting <clears throat> and you're burning all that out. You're hesitating over there and it's burning out and, and you can see it. You can see it's eating and then it fills up and then the slag starts to puke out and then you stay in that puddle and come over and do it again. You can waste a lot of time chipping and pecking and grinding on a restart when you're actually doing it for a living. You don't have time to do that. It is throw another rod in and go. Boom, boom. I, I was using two rods at a time. A lot of people say you can't do that. I'll show you how. Uh, but <clears throat> I'll make a video about it, actually. You got to do it with a stubby rod saver. So that's that's why. It, uh, just There's just no need. And, and a lot of times, after you make a pass and hit it with your file and you don't see any, you know, any undercut or any kind of... Uh, a, a, a heavy crown, a heavy crown that slags like tucked up under and there's like a, like there's a crown here and it makes a, a spot that might trap something in there. I would grind that for sure. But if you don't see that and it's not real bad, even if you do see a little bit, it'll burn it out. The end of your welding rod needs to be glowing. Okay. So that, that's uh, the way I feel about restarts. And if you chip all the slag off, you're more than likely going to catch BBs and, and stuff that's fallen off the other weld. So, no, I don't. And I hadn't in a long time. Now, when you start on the bottom of a piece of pot, that is a very good time to think about grinding the start on the very, very bottom of a piece of pot. You're, you're having to come over, and a lot of times you'll reach too far. And I always tried to do that for my buddy, us brother in law. I tried to reach over as far as I could and try to put a fast ramp. Like start off a little bit over from the very, very bottom pipe over here, but you're not going to do it like this. You're going to do it like this, the 7018. Scratch off, start, and kind of make them a ramp, and then start, start filling it up. And what he's going to do, if he knows what he's doing, he's going to put his hand up where the slag didn't hit you, and he's going to flick it off so it hits his hands, fall down, and he's going to start right where you left off. By the time you get to the top, you'll finish, he'll finish. Helpers knock the slag off and keep going. <clears throat> this was every day, guys. This is, I had to take this plate test because we have a special job on some crane rigging and stuff that had to have this one test. And you'd think they'd have a, okay, you've been doing this every day for so long. Your papers are good. But no, you have to do this. It's just part of it. And a test with a backing plate, I'm not trying to take anything away from people that that uh, are excited about passing the test, but that's the simpler test. It really is. It's uh, All you have to do is make sure you come over and break the wall down, come over and break the wall down on that very first pass, and the rest is pretty elementary. Now, I hate saying that because I don't want anybody to be discouraged. You gotta start somewhere and anything can happen uh, I started off with two bad rods, and uh, meaning, that's another tip. Before you take your test and you go to the rod heater and get your rod, look at them, inspect every one of them, and then, right before you put them in your stinger, or as you're putting your stinger, take your hand and run down. Just feel for any imperfection. There was some ch uh, chip slag on two or three rods. They supplied the rods, so they'd probably been in and out of the oven, you know. And uh, you scratch off and you tell it's acting funny. If it's real bad, get out of it and grind it. All I did was just kind of let it do its thing and, 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 and get back into it and burn it out. Uh, that's part of it. But that can happen and that can blow your test. One little speck of porosity on test or slag or anything, and it's done. It's over. I don't know how big it could be. It doesn't say over here. But uh, anyway, the last comment before the setup. Uh, this is a teacher. He'll be showing his high school advanced welding students the plate test that I just did that you guys are watching and asking questions about. They do a 3G plate on 12 uh, sorry, half inch plate with a root face bend, uh, 60 10 root and hot pass, then 1 8 70 18 the rest of the way. That 
is going to make excellent, excellent welders. That's what we had to do in school. That's one eighth. We didn't mess with 332. He called them easy. You don't need to, you don't need to be welding 332. They're, they're easy rods. He was right. That's a harder test. That is um, by far harder than what I just did on this plate with a backing strip. Yeah, it's one inch thick, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, the footage of pausing on the edges without undercutting plus amperage adjustment and arc length control exactly what needs to be emphasized. He's absolutely right. There's no doubt this guy's a welder. But listen, this is good. They love this test. The large diameter pipe buddy weld and the 2G boiler tube TIG root hot pass 332 718 filling cap. These are high school students. They are going to be monsters. This is awesome. Good job, teacher. Amazing. I didn't print your name out. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's really cool. Now, how did I pass the test? What did I do to get done in about three and a half, four hours with two one-inch plates, eight inches long? It's a lot of welding. And I didn't use 332s, except on the first and second pass. I you know, got it out and away, and then I used one-eighth, just like I showed you guys. But here's the most important thing. I didn't get burn up. I got one burn and I was pissed about that one. It's right here where I leaned up against a freaking plate that was hot. But I didn't get anywhere else. This is the gloves I wore. These, are, these were new gloves that I put on right before the test. That's the gloves I wore. That was this hand for the overhead. You know, it, it, it touched my glove a little bit. The fingers aren't burnt. That's, that was a brand new glove before the test. I didn't wear leathers. It was so enjoyable and nice. It wasn't before. Man, when I took tests before, it was miserable. I got burned up, all wigged out and shaky and nervous. And it was just like, okay, sit down and do this test. It was relaxing. I enjoyed it. I tried to get some footage. That's why I used their welding machine. I was going to try to video it, but it just didn't work out. I did get a little video. So I'm going to show you exactly how I set up. <laughs> And then I'm going to show you a video of me actually at the test booth. I found somewhere to put my arm. It's about right here. I put the vertical plate test here. I put the overhead right over here. So what I could do was take one pass on the vertical, and then I could just scoot over like this and put one pass on the overhead. Now, before I sat down, the CWI that ran the shop said, man, that's smart sitting down. <laughs> I said, yeah, I know. who wants to stand up all day and get burnt? What it does for you sitting down is it allows the slag and fire to fall through here, you know, between your legs, like not in your lap. You know, you're welding out here, you know, just eight inches. Um, and it gives you a way to hold your arm and you're, or you're sitting so you're steady and you can, I always like to look at my puddle. If you can't see your puddle, you're messing up. He said he likes to run it this way, drag it to him. I thought that, that is not what I would do. Uh, if you can't see your puddle and see what's going on, that applies with anything you're welding. You've got to see it. You got to see it good. Whatever you got to do to see it. So, one here on the vertical and over, one on the overhead. And what and you can you can tighten up and you can get your arm like up in the table and really stable. And and it's all you have to do. It's just it's just eight inches. It's that long. I took one eighth all the way out after the two beads, the two uh, root pass and a little thin filler to get it flat. One eighth all the way out. I capped half of the overhead with one eighth, 718. And I capped all of the vertical with 332. Uh, I was going to do one eighth, but I didn't want, it would have to have been, you know, real wide. And I, I didn't want anybody to say anything. I get enough stuff in the comments about how they don't like uh, weaves. What I was doing really wasn't a weave. It was just, 
it's just the way welders weld, I'm telling you. When you get in the field, nobody's putting a hundred little stringers of 332. If you're welding two one inch plates all the way out with a 332, you're gonna be there a minute. I'm just saying, that's, I've never experienced the trouble that people talk about when they talk about slag inclusion from weaving a little bit. I, I saw a very experienced welder do that on a test. It's actually a tube test. And mine looked good, but his looked great. And it was, you know, the bevel on that dude's about that wide. And he was able to cap the whole thing with three passes. And it looked wonderful. And uh, that that's where I started. I was like, man, that's cool. This passes. I'm in. And I started doing it like that ever since. I never had trouble, ever. When I was in the field, if you go back to my earlier videos, I was filling everything with one pass. Now, you see the VIs and people, armchair welders and everybody else, they're going to say, no, you can't do that. You just can't. I've been doing it a long, long time. You absolutely can. But you got to do what the inspector wants. Try to make everybody happy. If it takes you a lot, little longer, so what? But somehow or another, when you get in the field and you're producing twice what you were, or anybody else is, and nobody gonna say too much, okay? Now, I'm gonna roll the footage of me at the test booth. Let me know what you think of the setup, and hit the like button, subscribe if you like this kind of content. Hi everybody, I wanted to show you the setup for the plate test. We got an overhead one inch up here, and we got a particle right here. We got the place to put my arm. In order to keep it cool, one on this plate, one on this plate, and then put one on that plate. And I can brush it off, but there's no need. Just knock it off on the file to keep it going. Get comfortable. Sit in a chair. Here's the vertical cap. Have an awesome, awesome day. Later.